I haven't seen the movie in years. Good morning and welcome to Omni Bros Live, the Sunday show. I'm Omni Dog here live with a live Amar. Hey, I can't believe you wouldn't let me hold the dog mask. I thought it would be. You can try it. This is so weird. El, oh, El Omni Dog. Wow. El Burro. No, wait. I don't know how to speak Spanish. No, you don't. <laughs> don't even try. Can you roll your R's? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm totally whitewashed. I can't roll my uh, R's. I don't eat tamales for Christmas. No tamales on Christmas. And that is Gabe from Gabe Infinity Watch, along with Lou from Comics Guide 101. This is the Sunday show. How's it going, guys? It's going. All right. Yeah, man. Can't wait to hear about all the excitement and uh, planes, trains, and automobiles type fiascos you guys had going on at the con. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think before we do, we need to talk about something really important, though, and that is the fact that today is the last day that you can order from in-stock trades if you live in one of those states that's going to start charging taxes as of tomorrow. So just as a heads up, remember that. Guaranteed. Also remember, they don't charge tax. They collect tax. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> remember that. Thank you. Thank you. You got to be clear. Trades.com. Our sponsor, where you can get up to 50% off your collected editions. Loyalty discounts add 2% to that. Occasionally, they have sales. I think there's a sale going on right now that adds 3% to DC, maybe. There's a sale going on right yep. now? 45% off DC books. Okay. Uh, over $50 in the United States gets you free shipping. Uh, every quarter, there's an Omnibros Live discount, and we should be coming up on that. This is now the beginning of October, probably November, I would guess. Uh, fabulous service, fabulous packaging. That's InStockTrades.com. And real quick, we got to clear up something in the chat already. Uh, Lloyd, uh, we don't do Thursdays anymore? Wait. No, no we, we do, do Thursdays, all. not Wednesdays. Wednesdays is the show we don't do. But we didn't do this past Thursday because we had Ron Mars on Wednesday. And I was driving on Thursday. And he and had, had Transformers. Transformers was yeah. Thursday. That's right. That That's the important key part is that we went to go see Transformers. Yes, which was amazing. Not together, but, you know, as a thing. Which I find interesting that, like, it's funny because I saw it on Thursday. And then Friday I came over to see Jess. And he has a box of things that he's getting rid of. And one of the things in his box was a vinyl record of Transformers, the soundtrack. Oh, you're getting rid of that? That thing's wow. bad, dude. This is the most wonderful soundtrack ever. Yes. Was, dude, that is nothing but crappy pop music. <laughs> I thought it was, you thought it was the score. I thought it was the score, and it turns out to be the songs from it, and they all suck. Wow. Oh, those, that, 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 that thing is great. You got Weird Al. You got The Touch. Yes, you got the touch. Sam Bush. Yeah, he's like, I don't care. Whatever. <laughs> there. So, every time I listen to that 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 soundtrack, though, when the song comes on where Optimus Prime dies, I have to change it. I can't listen to that song. <laughs> it's going to be hard to do on a record, though. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. You don't even own a vinyl player, do you? My wife does. Oh, she does? Okay. Yeah. Vinyl player? Also known it's as a, a turntable. Turn table. <laughs> That's what he was getting rid of, the vinyl. And I'm like, why do you even own this? And, and I said, like, I don't know. <laughs> he likes music, so he thought he would enjoy that. And <laughs> Two vinyl players and a microphone. Two turntables and a microphone. Um, so, yeah, what are we talking about today? It's Sunday. I never do this show. Well, tell us about uh, the convention, bro. You should, you should do Sundays more. I should, but I'm usually at church praying for my sins um it was a lot of fun uh, you know yeah, just coming up here and visiting jess was a lot of fun uh, but going with him there it was pretty cool we got to see a couple of people from the from the group too and we met up with freeha and uh, tyler chu and had lunch and dinner with them a couple times oh yeah i want to give a shout out to i had uh fans from the uk come up and fans. talk to me about it. How much they like Omni Bros and how much they like Root Beer Reviews. They're from the UK and they were at Baltimore. And they came up to me while I was having coffee and they're like, yeah, are you, are you Omni Dog from Root Beer Reviews? I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, we love Omni Bros. We love Root Beer Reviews. We love it. We watch it all the time. And I don't know where in the UK they were from, but they were uh, Ian, Amy, and Jack Forster. So... Peace and love to you guys. Thanks. You guys made my day by coming up to me and saying how much you loved Root Beer Reviews and the Omni Bros. That was awesome. I, you 
really, I can't tell you how much that meant to me that you guys went out of your way to say hi to me and that you were in Baltimore. He had people coming up to him and giving him things too, like uh, oh. root beers, <laughs> which I thought was really weird because he was supposed to be my guy that's holding like my equipment. And he had people hold stuff for him. Yeah, I don't randomly. I don't remember agreeing to be your equipment guy. I'm pretty sure that was the deal. Anyway, <laughs> uh, people would just bring up like root beer and fan him, and I'm like, "What the hell is going on?" <laughs> Chase Chu from the chat. I don't know if he's in there today, but he's a member of the group too. He brought me an Australian root beer, and it tasted really good <laughs> at the show. And so I was super thirsty, and I powered that down. Then uh, Anthony came up and he was looking for Omar. It was funny. Anthony Imperiali, he came up and he's like, hey, uh, are you Omni Dog? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, hey, I love Omni Bros. I love the show and everything. Hey, I, and I said, yeah, Omar's here too. Omar, Omar has his own channel. I love that guy. And I'm like, well, I have my own channel too, you know. And he's like, oh, I want to meet Omar. I'm like, great. I'll call him over. He did. But unfortunately, I didn't get to meet him, so so I was standing two hours in line for some people. It was a, uh, it wasn't as bad as some shows I've been to, but it was still pretty crowded. I guess more than I was expecting. It was more than I was expecting too. The Baltimore's length blowing of up. It's becoming What's a bigger. That? Baltimore's becoming a bigger show. Like, I think it's, it's really on a lot of people's lists. Yeah, like, it's a lot of big more noticeable list. because it was it started off as such a smaller show that people were like, well, I'll just go down there to meet comic book creators and get a bunch of signatures. And for real, I mean, people were because a lot of these guys didn't have a limit. So some guys had like 30 books to get signed. And, uh, I, you know, because Justin and I just had like one or two books each, probably. For yeah, people. total. But some people in line were just taking advantage of the no limit stuff. And some of these creators, like Dan Slot, love to talk to everybody, too. Like they'll take time to talk to you about whatever the hell you want to talk to them about. Yeah, and Mark Wade, he said somebody came up and just threw down a huge stack right before we were gonna see him, and <laughs> you know, a huge stack of Archies, like twenty Archies. I'm like, man, I under, I do have a sympathy for somebody that stands in line for a long time, and then once you finally meet the creator, wants to talk to the creator a little bit and have some interaction with him. I get why the line lasts that long. You do sort of want to get validation that way that your time was well spent and you want to talk to your creator. But I, I think asking for more than one or two things to get signed is really uncool. I just don't, that guy in front of us had like a, a loader pallet thing with five boxes on it. I'm not Jesus. kidding. It was, it was something you'd use to move furniture or something. And he was wheeling that thing around the convention. <laughs> you had and a pallet jack. <laughs> Uh, no, it was like, yeah, it was like a almost, it wasn't as big as a pallet jack, but, <laughs> but it was, it was, you know, made of metal and on wheels and you'd push it. It was probably this. It was almost like a dolly that transforms it. You know, yeah. you ever seen those dollies that transform into a four wheel dolly? Yeah. That's what it was like. That's and honestly, right. that's what I was expecting Jess to take because that's what <laughs> I always figured he was like, but no, he was a, uh, he was a pretty nice guy. He was like. I'm done. I'm not standing in line anymore. Yeah. So I'm like, Saturday, All right, I had I'm my limit. I'm done too, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we're leaving. I'm tired. <laughs> so it was it was pretty cool. Frank Miller, I think, canceled on Sunday, so he was only there Saturday. So a lot of people went to go see him that Saturday. Uh, your boys from CGC were there, Gabe. What up? I said your boys from CGC were there. Oh, cool. Yeah, there's a big CGC presence at Baltimore. It's probably it's Sam. Sam was probably there. Why am I on here twice? I don't know. Did you re re hit the button? You want me to no. get you? Are you going to kick me out? Oh, racist. <laughs> now is the perfect time for Jess to say that you do look alike. Both of you. Yeah, that one's Wait, one. do I want to eject that one or both? Will this eject both of them? Yeah. No, no, that'll just eject that one that's frozen. See? Okay. All right. Um, so let's see. It was Dan Slott. Jim Starlin had a big line because right now Infinity Gauntlet is very good, man. He deserves uh, a big line. Uh, it's very popular right now. Um, who is the other besides Jim Starlin? Who's, who's the guy with the big gray hair and dresses in turtlenecks with a sport coat? Oh, Steranko? Steranko. He had a big line, too. Yeah, that's good. That's good to see Steranko have a huge line because yeah. usually when he goes to the conventions that I go to, 
he has a small line because the conventions that I go to in Central Kentucky focus more on Power Rangers <laughs> and less on comic book creators. Like but Con, what's up. the wrinkle doing at a Power Rangers convention? It, no, it's a Lexington comic and toy show. So, uh, somebody, oh, Freehead was asking what that convention was like, and I'm like, oh well, I hope you like Power Rangers because there are 40 of them that come to this thing, and then like probably 20 comic book creators, including, but they get big names like Jim Stranko and uh, Neil Adams was there last year. And Greg Capullo, people like that. So it's it. Then the those lines are so much smaller for them because everybody's there to go see the wrestlers. That's the other thing they they go see, wrestlers and uh, Power Rangers. So it's wrestling and Power Rangers. See, you know how to say like you're from Kentucky, wrestling. <laughs> That's right. Wrestling. <laughs> Gonna slam that boy uh, through a table. Line was, Brian Azarello's line was too long for me. I didn't even see him. I just took. Just by his word, he was like, "I'm not doing it," and I'm like, "Okay, I guess I'm not staying in line either." I just did not. Uh, I was. I will show you what I did get signed. Uh, Marguerite Bennett was there. She's awesome. She did bombshells. She oh, nice signature. She is really tall and really uh, pretty. She's quite attractive and very nice. See, she should put a heart there. So that means something. Yeah, to totally, somebody. She's totally crushing on Jess. Yeah. <laughs> Did you, did you show her your dog mask that you wear in bed? Uh, I did not, and I do not wear that in bed. <laughs> oh, man, I put that on my face. <laughs> she did insects, too. So she signed by insects. Oh. Again, with the heart. I think that was a booby book he showed us, right? With lots of insects. No. Erotic horror is how it's. It's erotic like. animal or insect fucking. And here's somebody that wants to be on the show, Carl Kessel, who wrote uh, Harley Quinn. Famous run with Terry Dodson. Wait, wait, wait! You said he wants to be on the show. Our show, yeah. What? Yeah, we'll Dude, he, you know how how infamous he is for like the Fantastic Four. Yeah, he did a good like, run on that. He's yeah. inked, he's inked like the Fantastic Four for like and colored it for years. Like, well, he's a good writer too. He's awesome. Yeah. Um, he's got a Kickstarter coming up. He had some books. Oh well, yeah, see. he wants to be interviewed soon because he, it was Kickstarter. Right. He has do it. He had a book called Section Zero that I got signed by the Tom Grummet. Oh, is that his name? Oh, cool. Name. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Tom Grummet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a mistake. Where's John, John P. at? John P., yeah. yeah. And so here's Section Zero. Um, and so, yeah, uh, Carl wants to be on in the next couple of weeks because he's got a Kickstarter going and he wants to promote it. Let's do it. So yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. Okay, well, that leads up to uh, this next topic. Who else did you guys talk to about getting on the show? I talked to a few creators, like Bob McLeod and Mark Wade. So you I'm say Mc you say McLeod? Mc McLeod. No. It's, Mc it's McLeod. Mc McLeod. It's, it's Scottish. It's Mc McLeod. McLeod. Scott? No, Mc 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 the guy that makes all the X-Men and New Mutants? It's, 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 it's McCloud. McCloud is what you do in the McDonald's bathroom. I'm not arguing with you guys. I'm just going to take your word for it. Sure. That's what you do in the McDonald's bathroom is you make a McLeod. Scott McLeod is a person. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Wade and Barry Kitson signed Empire. Barry Kitson wrote, signed it out here. Mark Wade signed it in there. Hey, let me see that. I really like this book. And I got Mark Wade to sign Daredevil. Jess was one of those guys that had two books, complaining about guys that had two books ahead of him. I did not complain about anybody having two books. We were like, well, I guess I'll do my two books, too. Uh, yeah, it was when they had 40 books. And then uh, we bought, uh, I think Omar and each got Beast of the Black Hand from Ron Mars' booth. Yeah, I got the oh, book. That looks a lot bigger than, than it looked when he was showing it to us on the show. I agree. Yeah, it's quite big. Yeah. That's what she said. Okay. How was Ron Mars in person? Like how? Like did he remember he was you? Cool. Oh, he remembered us. He remembered us. He, he was, was like, cool. "Hey, where's Omar?" And Jess is like, "Oh, he's over there standing in Don Rosa's line." Yeah. Oh, Don Rosa was there too. Nice. Yeah, but man, like anytime I ever see Don Rosa at shows, he he doesn't have a huge line, but this time he did. And on top of that, he's such a nice guy that he dr takes his time to draw things. So I was gonna get something for Kristen because I know that she likes uh, Don Rosa and the Duck comics. But I literally was in line for like 45 minutes. I hadn't moved anywhere. No. And, and Jess was about, he was ready to leave. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm not going to be an asshole and be like, can we stay another hour, please? So you, my <laughs> you hadn't moved at all. I know. I insane. went there and I said, I'm going to go get a picture with Marguerite Bennett. And then I went over there. I came back. He hadn't moved. And, <laughs> well, I'm going to go over and talk to Ron Mars again. 
I go over there. I, I went well, to call my sister for her birthday over in the food court. I come okay, back. let's not exaggerate. It I did. Bad. Yes, it was. You hadn't moved. For well, like I, minutes. It was so bad that I told the guy in line behind me, I'm like, hold my spot. And I went over to Tom Rainey, and Tom Rainey did a head sketch for my wife of Wolverine. So I was like, hey, oh, I guess I've got to go back and stand in line in Don Rose's line. And I did not move at all. I was still behind. Because this guy, because they come from other countries. I get it. You know, they come from other countries to meet him. And they brought these gigantic freaking sketch pads for him to draw, like, a the duck family tree, which is he's infamous for drawing. <laughs> oh, really? And I'm like, yeah, man, I'm, not, I'm done. So I went over to Mark Buckingham, who had nobody there, and talked to him for a while. Oh, that would have been cool. Oh, that's crazy. Mark Buckingham had nobody? Yeah, because the entire time, like, he, it was, like, right before he left the show. So I also talked to him and got his info, so I'll reach out to him. He was a nice guy. Really cool dude, like you know, drew fables forever. Yeah, and, fables. Uh, yeah, yeah. Chris Bachalo's artwork for years because I thought honestly, it's probably his inks that made me a big uh, Bachalo fan. Because when Chris Bachalo draws with the album Buckingham, it's a completely different kind of art right, style. Right. But yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, we did. We went out to eat with Tyler and Faria twice, and um, let's see. Did you guys talk to Dan Slot? Yep. Yeah, that was a long line. I that was insane too. I visited that line, but I did not stand in it. They yep. were in that line a long time for Dan. He Slott. only came over because there was like a booby uh, booth next to to Dan Slot's line where these chicks were selling. What is it? Xenoscope comics. Uh, Xena. It's what, the what people that? that do the grim fairy tales. They had yeah, Zen, yeah, yeah, Xenoscope. Yeah. Yeah. So like, Xenoscope, had, like yeah. Xenoscope. Yeah. So they had half naked models standing there holding books and just, and just kept coming over. One of like, them. You don't uh, care about Dan Slott. <laughs> <laughs> one of them complimented my Hey Arnold shirt, Gabe. I got like legit forty compliments. Yeah, he on got that so shirt. many compliments yeah. on the Hey Arnold button up shirts. <laughs> That's funny. Somebody in the group uh, called it a Simpson shirt. Yeah, I know. They couldn't see. Oh, them. because it was pink. The button up shirt, it, and it may have Arnold's hair may have looked like Simpson's hair or something. I don't know, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, one of the models complimented me on my shirt, so I took that with me for the rest of the day. Did you compliment her on her not wearing a shirt? Um, I told him he should have. I should have, but I didn't want to creep her out, so I just said <laughs> thank you very much. Right, because there weren't enough of those around there. <laughs> what creepy guys? Yeah, like the dude <laughs> fall. There's a chick dressed as Poison Ivy. Oh. Um, and when we were walking back to the car, this is so weird because this is really creepy. Um, <laughs> so there's a guy with his phone standing like this the entire time. Oh, I think she just knocked it out of his hand. <laughs> and I, well, yeah, I almost did, but I thought they were together. And I'm like, and then because I, I, I only looked at her backside, right? So I'm like, of course, oh, maybe she's got a butter face, and that this is the dude that's with her. And get in and her best side. The elevator, they were obviously not together. And I was like, oh, damn it. This is so creepy. And when the elevator, this guy could probably uh, break me in half and kill Jess. Oh, no, he couldn't have, man. He was a creeper. I would have knocked that thing out had I known. Anyway, so that's what he was doing. She he was, was really attractive. Yeah, he was recording her backside the whole time. That was. So we asked for, to, for him to send videos. Yeah, to we us. gave him our addresses and he's going to send us copies. Us All right, so, um, show those on the show later. <laughs> <laughs> False. That did not happen. Uh, but yeah, overall it was pretty fun. We didn't go today because we figured I got a little bit of a drive, so we just hang out on the on the show for now. Uh, but we are giving away a fifty dollar in stock That's credit right. sometime today. Um, whenever you guys want, yeah. Whenever halfway through the show or whatever, we'll ask a question and then they can email us, right? Yeah, yeah. they can email us at omnibroslive at gmail .com and I will. Uh, I'll take the first 15 people who have the answer and do a random number generator, one through 15, and we'll pick our winner that way. If you've, if you've already won, please don't enter and do not put the answer in the chat. Just and Luis, don't give out the answer either, bro. Yeah, and Luis, don't blurt out the answer. <laughs> got it, got it. <laughs> Wait, can I ask it now? Do we have enough people? we got 34 people watching, right? Um, yeah, but we won't have enough likes. We need more likes. Okay, we need more likes, people, before we can do the IST gift card giveaway. You like horse. <laughs> That's right. What's our new name? Hardcover Horrors? Is that for Sundays only? For Sundays? Hardcover Horrors. Hardcover Horrors. I did haul a couple of hardcovers. That's about it. We need to, we need to get more uh, reviews on iTunes. 
because that bumps us up. What? We have iTunes? We have an iTunes. You know what? what? I really need to figure out a way because the iTunes, we are on iTunes, but it's a, it's a video of the show. So you download the actual video to your phone. <laughs> I need to figure out a way to make it where it's just audio one day. So we could just do an audio podcast of this show on iTunes so people can just download it that way. Um, so Lloyd was asking me how epic is Jess's vault. It is freaking cool down here. I told him it's a damn shame he doesn't have uh, geek friends around his area to admire his collection. That's that's one thing I like to do is have people over uh, in my basement. I bet you do. <laughs> I was trying to make it not sound creepy, but <laughs> it totally sounded creepy. Uh, you know, because you know, like geeks, they, they're like, oh, my God, this is this figure from what's it called and things like that. But Jess really doesn't have friends. Um, at all. Th- at all. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I love that. Wow, this got dark. <laughs> Omar just grabbed a book and sat down, and I put music on and the background music, and we started reading while I was doing some other stuff. It was great to have a friend really appreciate the the basement like that. It was really yeah. fun to have him over. It's a lot of it, it's really cool. He's got his own bathroom down here. It's very similar to mine, but the way that he's got it set up, I think it's really cool. And he's got this door over here that he won't let me in. So that's imagine that's where all the dead girls are. But <laughs> yeah, the, who am I to judge? That's the unfinished part of the basement. You can go in there. There's just uh-huh. suitcases yeah, and stuff. I'm good. Made of. But yeah, it's wonderful. Full, it. full, full of dead bodies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sex torture room. <laughs> so how was the uh, stink factor at the convention? Uh, it was actually not terrible. bad. I didn't. I mean, I ran. I walked by somebody who hadn't bathed in a while, but for the most part, it was. It was pretty nice. Yeah. It was nice and airy. There's a lot of women, a lot of families. Not as much cosplay as I thought there was going to be, but there was an awful lot of families there. So I told my sister that nerds are breeding and they're all over the place. <laughs> so I thought it was, yeah, it, was, it, it wasn't too hot. It was well ventilated, which I really liked because Awesome Con has gotten way too warm for a couple of years in a row, but Baltimore did a good job at keeping things cool in there. I, I think, uh, I think with the format of this show with you guys together and Jess having no friends, <laughs> I think means we all need to move to the DMV area. Yeah. So we can do the show live together, like on a couple, couple daily basis and hang out in Jess's basement. Dude, he like you get that many Latinos down here. That's gonna be so much shit missing from his basement. <laughs> <laughs> no way, you get a bunch of Latinos in there. That that unfinished room would become finished. Oh yeah, <laughs> you just get us some fucking tequila and beer. <laughs> just pay us and Bud Light. Going as long while he's asleep. <laughs> yeah, the first thing Omar did when he got down here was like, "Oh, dude, you need to cover up these windows." I'm like, "Oh yeah, the sun can be a problem." He's like, "No, man." Some Latinos mowing your lawn are going to check out the windows and see all your shit and want to steal it. I didn't say Latinos, did I? Yeah, you did. That's uh, all you've said it. since you've been uh, here is uh, something about white privilege and Latinos. Whoa, whoa. Wow. I don't think I said white privilege, did I? Um, that like show, yeah, that sounds like I. that's the shit I say at home. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm down. Yeah, there's some nice neighborhoods here, man. Some flea markets. I told Jess we need to open up a comic book shop. We knocked down this flea market and uh, let's put our put our shop there. He's, he's got enough <laughs> shit to sell. That would we can be make fun. it happen. What's that? We can make it that happen. Yeah, man. You just need to steal like half the inventory from Torpedo Comics and we'd be set up. Yeah, we need to do Torpedo East Coast. Or that. Sure. That- <laughs> <laughs> the let's go out there and start buying collections and start selling shit. I'm just checking out some of the chat questions. <laughs> Martin, it's white privilege. <laughs> my white privilege is my wife when she sits in the front seat and we get pulled over. <laughs> He's okay, officer. He's with me and the car's not stolen. <laughs> <laughs> he is legal. <laughs> I taught him English. I think, uh, we for real had some old lady tell us that like, after we got done talking, I can't remember if it was at a restaurant or something. In Tennessee, she looked at my wife. She's like, "Oh my gosh, you have taught him English so well." Oh, you're kidding! <laughs> and I was like, "Uh, uh-uh. uh." <laughs> I 
I didn't say anything, but whatever. Holy smoke. <laughs> Holy smoke. Wow. All right. We're ready to give this card away. Let's do it. $50 gift card. So what are the rules, Jess? I'm going to ask the question. Jess is going to. Okay. Don't answer in the chat. Send your answer to omnibroslive at gmail.com. And uh, first 15 people with the correct answer will be entered into the randomizer uh, for the chance to win the IST gift card. If you've already entered and won, please don't. Uh, enter this time uh, and don't put the answer in the chat. Send it to omnibroslive at gmail.com. Okay. We ready? Sure. Let me, uh, I will pull up the randomizer. Okay. Don't, don't answer the question. Luis, don't answer. So the question is, with all this stuff of the Wang, who, what was the character's name? that Batman merged with during the Amalgam series. I need uh, the name of the character from the Marvel comics that he was merged with and what his name was. The what Amalgam name. So the Amalgam character and the character that- ben That he merged with from the Marvel comics, yeah. Right. That's easy enough. That's an easy question. Holy smoke, I don't know the answer to that question. Do, do you read comic books, man? I do. Oh, that hasn't been collected, though. No, but Jess is on a comic book protest in the 90s. <laughs> that's, pro that's probably a good thing, though. After the death of Superman, when he was on the... Jess is on the news about the death of Superman and then hates all 90s comics. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, Jess is checking that. How, how have you guys been doing? What's new with you all? We had a uh, signing at the store yesterday. So while yeah. you guys were in Baltimore... <laughs> Sam Keith and Jay Lee. I remember asking Jay Lee if he would like to be interviewed, but he said he hates being in front of cameras. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask him that, but I was just going to leave it alone because I was like, if you already got asked once, I'm not going to bug him. But Sam Keith, maybe we could pull him in. He's a nice dude. dude. Yeah, but he's a super recluse, though. Like he, this is like he doesn't do appearances ever. Really? Like, I was so surprised. How did you get him out there? I, uh, because we did a uh, an exclusive cover for that Batman Max. And we know like his art dealer and, and, and stuff like that. So we, we had our own connections involved with it. But I didn't I didn't realize how huge of a following like this guy had, Sam Keith. I love his work. Huge Sam Keith and I, get, I he deserves to have a following. But there was people at the at the signing who, who was telling me he's my absolute favorite artist, like uh, the I, Max I meet more to me than Watchmen. He has you know? a very unique style. Yeah, he does. Um like he doesn't do appearances. Like this is like his first appearance in like twenty years. He was saying like he doesn't do store appearances. He doesn't do conventions. Um, he I don't know if you ever seen him in person, but he does not look the way you would think somebody who draws not, that way looks. Not until you showed me the picture that I'm like, is that Sam Keith? And I don't even know how I knew it was Sam Keith. Maybe because he did some kind of weird interview with MTV in the '90s when he was doing the. The, the Max uh, series. Right, right. You know what I was telling Jess? Like, he gets a lot of love for the Max and stuff, but the guy that co-created it with him, uh, William Messner and Lobes, like, that's who you guys need to get at your shop, man. If anything, you throw him a bone because the guy's homeless now. Is he really? Yeah. I, you I, never read an article. But Jess said that he read an updated thing that somebody's taking care of him. Maybe some He was just on, like, this other podcast I was listening to. Yeah, right. Uh, but before that, like, seriously, for months, the guy had been homeless. I mean, he had he had bad luck as it was anyway. Because I remember him like um, he lost an arm right like, right before he started writing Wonder Woman and Thor, and um, he created Artemis, right? Yeah, Artemis, yeah. yeah. Um, who's a fame uh, popular character now, and I felt so bad. I'm like, man, this guy is completely homeless, and I forgot that he co-created the Max with Sam Key. Oh, we don't have any homeless people in the store. Oh, okay. well, I mean, you could pass him off as the cre <laughs> well, creator. Well, well, speaking of, like when uh, when Zubair and uh, and Will went to go pick up uh, Sam Keith and his art dealer at the airport, they were talking to his art dealer, and then this guy shows up, and they're like, "Who's this homeless guy?" <laughs> like, <laughs> Sam Keith is like like the super quiet, extremely soft spoken, yeah. extremely generous, extremely nice, just 
nicest guy you're ever going to meet. Like he is just was a fabulous person. Like he was great for the signing. So I'll show you guys that I got signed as we kind of like wait for more answers to come through and all that kind of stuff. My, qu my question is who would, uh, who had the max drawn on that Batman cover? Was that you? <laughs> somebody, you showed us oh. a picture of somebody uh, getting the max drawn on a Batman number one rebirth cover. Yeah, no, no, that was a, that was a zoo bear was getting that done. Uh, zoo bears. Uh, he, he runs planet. Awesome comics. Okay. He works with and stuff, but, um, well, yeah, I was just like, dude, because like, he wasn't doing he wasn't doing sketches. Like he was selling prints with little remarks, like beautiful remarks, but they were, you know, you know, they were remarks. They were nice and beautiful. Right. Um, there's videos of it on the torpedo Instagram, but they were like, you know, six hundred dollars. Or oh, he did this giant print with this giant like colored like remark of the max that were like a thousand dollars. Is he doing anything these days? Um no, not that I know of, really. I mean, besides this new Max and Batman book that came out, or that's coming out next week. Yeah. All right, Jessica. Um, and I asked him, I was like, dude, well, you know, have you thought about like doing like an omnibus of 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 the Max? And he kind of didn't know what I was talking about, so I had to like bring over a couple omnibuses. Like, hey, you could do them in this size. Well, remember, or you can do absolutes that are like are. this. That would be like three. IDW is releasing the omnibus, but it's a stupid soft cover omnibus. Only right, right. That's what I was telling them. I mean, we were hardcovers on these. Yeah. Yeah, we're hardcover whores. We want the hardcover ones. But right. he was interested in the idea of doing like like a big solid hardcover or even like a couple absolutes kind of style. Yeah. So, like, I was talking them into it for a little bit. So if you ever get that, you're welcome. Thanks, Gabe. Yeah. <laughs> like he had original art there from a, like his zero girl that was like stupid cheap, you like, like 150 yeah, bucks. You can, you can stop your entering. We picked the uh, winner. Uh, I did not. Number generator. You just did. So don't get pissed at me. <laughs> I had nothing to do with it. It was a random number what? generator. I, I just random number random generator. Number. Right, right. Yeah. Right. And the winner is Daniel Cohen. And Daniel, congratulations. I just yeah. need to know if the. Uh, email you are associated with here that you sent it in is that your IST email? Um, if you can let us know uh, if it is, because that's how we submit uh, you to IST is through your email that you have set up with IST. So Daniel Cohen is the winner. Congratulations. The answer is Dark Claw, which I had no idea. Very good. Dark Claw. And Dude, you got to look up Dark Claw. Wolverine. Uh, Jess, he's badass. And there were two books. There was an animated Dark Claw book and then the Dark Claw book. And they're both pretty tight. Yeah. When I, was this? 90. Was it 96, Gabe? 96? No, no, no. Yeah. Well, it was they were in the Marvel versus DC stuff. So that was like 94. Yeah. So mid 90s. Mid 90s, mid 90s. Uh, Jake, I have a question. And he said, Have you. Have any of you guys picked up Spider-Man Venom Epic or Daredevil Roots of Evil? I have the Daredevil Roots. I, I'm still on the fence about the Spider-Man Venom since I have the Omnibus. He says there's a lot of controversy on the forums regarding them. What's I'd the like to know why. Yeah. yeah. What is the controversy? Well, I just asked him. So yeah. We have to wait for a reply. No, give it to us now. What, Jake? What's the controversy? I think there was like yeah, a five-second delay. Because somebody looked it up on the forum. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so uh, anyways, so check this out. I got uh, I, I talked about this on the show before. Wolverine, oh, Blood Hungry. Yeah. <clears throat> dude, he still has the original art for the cover. For that or for he the... had it at the store. It was there. Like I saw it and touched it. That's a collection of Marvel Comics presents right there, Gabe or Jess. Yeah, oh, he's been calling me Gabe all weekend. I don't know why. I don't. I know it. why. I know why. Don't say it. Because <laughs> you guys look so much alike. Show the book, weirdo. All right, so yeah, so we got this. So that's I got this time. Marvel Comics Presents run that he introduced Cyber. Dude, the art in this is sick. Oh, like, there is some the most amazing Wolverine art in here. Like, I remember the this, panels where he's climbing up the wall with his yeah, head. or this one here where he just because in this book he fights a character named Cyber, who is like the only character Wolverine has ever been afraid of, like deathly terrified, shaking in his pants. Peter, afraid David. of this character. Yeah, this is Peter <laughs> David. And this is after he just got like his guts ripped out of him. And he's just lying in this like fetal position, hurting. Which is funny because uh, Sam Keith reuses this panel in the Max as well. So it's kind of really. Cool. 
But the art in this thing is just disgustingly great. Like it's awesome. I love the way he draws like like his shredded uniform with all the like the little twist and, oh, and yeah. curls and like ripping out of it. Yeah. So I was showing him this and he goes, Oh god, I hate looking at this book. Right? Really? Because the art the the colorist, uh, it's funny because he was like, Oh, I hate the color in this book. It's it's terrible. And Jay Lee's right there next to him, and Jay Lee goes, Oh, is it uh uh Pat Garrity, Pat Garrity, and um, it ended up being because this guy is, I guess, notorious for just taking solid colors and just coloring stuff. Like the background would be all purple, or a character would be all purple and stuff like that. So on the on the front of this cover, on Cipher's nose, you can't see it anymore, but he just colored the shading and the nose purple. Oh yeah, and he was. I hate that he did that. Like that's that's terrible. Like it, it was. Because the art's right behind him. Like, me and him are looking at the art. He's showing me the art, the original cover art, and showing me the comparison of how the coloring did on this. And I go, how about you just, if you're complaining, he's like, because he hates it so much, I go, why don't you just recolor his nose for me on here? Go, oh, okay, that's a good idea. So he just, <laughs> it's all been, like, recolored in. It's all remarked. Like, he autographed it and just, like, recolor the whole, like, nose of Cypher. And he goes, there you go. Only me and you would get that story. You will understand what this is about. <laughs> You know, what, what's funny is Walter Simonson, like, he's notorious for – he was at the con. I didn't get a chance to talk to him because his line was huge on Saturday. But he's notorious for not being happy with some of the art that it, that he turned out in X Factor. I can't remember the name the, – the, the issue number. But people have brought it, and what he does is he puts uh, – Tyler was telling us about this too. Mm. He covers a face up with, like, a Post-it note or something and redraws the face for you. And he's like, yeah, there you go. Now it's better. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm going to find what issue that is and have that happen. Yeah, very cool. Has that book been reprinted anywhere else? Like, I know it, it will eventually be in a Wolverine epic collection, but that the one that you're holding up or the cyber story? No, I don't, think it's, I, I don't think I've ever seen this collected anywhere before. Yeah, me neither. I'm, I, I'm sure it'll be in some kind of epic collection, probably epic collection three or four. I hope so. I would rebuy it. Like I will buy any version. This is like this to me like was is like my favorite Wolverine. Like he's he's hairy and he's grumpy and he's like short and stout and he's just this just killer badass. Like I love his version of okay. uh, of Wolverine, dude. So we got an answer from E. Tyler and Jake. Uh the paper stock and the spine issues are the are the problems with those two epics. The Spidey has been cut at a weird angle, but mostly the issues are with the front cover being printed on the cheap. That would be bad. Cheap paper. <laughs> we good now? Yeah. yeah. I'll have to look at that. I have we have a couple of them at the store. I've got I've got the root of evil, and I'm still on the fence, like yeah. I said, about um the Spider-Man one. Yeah, I have Spider-Man Venom at the store. Daredevil Roots of Evil has issues with the spine in regards to the cover wrapping around onto the spine. Man. And weirdly, wow, that is weird. And weirdly, halfway through, six pages use a glossier paper stock then randomly change back. This is the epics? Yeah. Huh. Usually they do a good job. Yeah, they're pretty solid about the way they do those epics. Yeah. Um, where should you start reading Spider-Man? I think both Luis and I did a video on that, didn't we? Oh, or yeah. I, I did a video on my channel, and he did a video on his channel. Long and we both recommended uh, – there were similar ones that we recommended because I watched this video. Mm -hmm. Um. You got your ideas from it? I told him. Copying idea. them? Yeah. Other way around. Mm. <laughs> People got pissy with me because I spoiled in Death of Spider-Man. Spider-Man actually dies. Oh, <laughs> ultimate, the ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah. yeah. People got mad at me. I'm like, it's called Death of Spider-Man. What the hell do you think is going to happen? <laughs> so I also got a, I got this maximized hardcover. Yes. Yeah, IDW was doing these for a while. Those have been recolored. Yeah, yeah, they're recolored. It's a new cover. Like he did new covers for them and everything. So I got that sign. He did like a little doodle on it for me as well. It's this little cute little like Izzy looking guy down there. So where uh, I guess you start with Spider Man. I suggested a few. Like I think Ultimate Spider Man's a good starting on point for people that are new to the character. Um, if you're gonna go the six one six route, I suggested JMS's run. I think oh. that's a jumping on point, and then uh, Dan Slot's a uh, big time. Although the ultimate, the ultimate stuff, the ultimate stuff is a bit dated at this point. Just, uh, some of the references they have in there are a more, bit dated. more dated than the '60s Spider-Man, though. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, like kids today, like there's like Paris Hilton references and stuff like that. Like, yeah. it's that's everything for the ultimate. Come yeah. on, man! It wasn't that long ago. Paris Hilton is still, I guess, around, right? But not relevant. 
not relevant anymore. Oh, okay. I don't I think would suggest they thought. start with the Clone Saga omnibuses. Yeah, that's a great starting off point. Don't listen to Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, I think J JMS is probably one of the better better uh, jumping on points. Yeah, JMS was a lot uh, of fun because you didn't. One, what was it after the the marriage broke up? One more day. Uh, big. I would go with big time. Well, definitely, definitely big time. Big time is is a really good jumping on point, and a lot of those are being collected in complete collections. The uh, uh, Dan Slot complete collection books. Can you jump into Justice League Dark Side more blind? Yeah, I don't see why not. Have y'all read that the New Fifty Two run, the Dark yeah. Side War? Mm -hmm. I don't. That's a good. That's a good story. I think Dark Side is bad. He comes from another planet. That's pretty much all you need to know. <laughs> really, <laughs> well, it's also a bunch of anything else happening in that. <laughs> well, it's also like the first appearance of his daughter. Uh, I forgot her name. Was it like Ruin, Ruin, something like that? Sure, you remember. Uh, what oh, was that whole thing with the uh, when the Justice League become like the new gods and right. Batman's on the Mobius chair? Mm -hmm. All like three Jokers come out of that. Spoilers. Yeah, you just spoiled it big time for the guy. Yeah. Uh, James, big time does not have Peter and MJ together, sadly. That was after one more day. That's but, what makes it better. Yeah. No, I don't know about that. No, dude. They, that's, oh, I hate the wedding idea, but that's fine. That's because you hate love. I do. <laughs> uh, yeah. I do. I like, I like people with happy endings. Somebody in the chat's asking about Batman oh, Dan, if, you should, if he should pay $100 for it. Yeah. Oh, the Batman Dam, dude. That thing was going anywhere from sixty-five to hundred dollars at the con. It's in. It's crazy because DC did something stupid, right? They they announced they're like, we're not doing a second printing, right? But the minute that they changed their mind, they're like, oh, well, let's go ahead and do a second printing. Those books are all going to drop in price. No, 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 no. You got it backwards. Oh, here we go. Comic conspiracy theories. That's actually, what actually Omar. Actually, <laughs> my <laughs> channel should be called Comic Conspiracy Theories. <laughs> all right, lay it out. What do you got? So they were going to do a second print, and they announced that they were going to like cover up the bat dick. Right. So that's that's what kind of sparked the whole thing for for the first print because people want the first print. They don't want it censored because censorship right. censorship is evil. I, I get it. Get and it. then DC recently, a couple of days ago, said, "Never mind. We're not going to do a second print. We're not going to reprint this at all anymore." Mm. I don't know about it at all. I don't, I don't know if it's going to be like a collected edition ever. But yeah. they said they're not going to reprint. You know that's coming. They they love money. They're going to have a collected edition. They're going to yeah. They're going to reprint. Yeah. But that's the thing though. Are they going to reprint it untouched? Yeah, I think they're going to have an uncensored. It would be stupid yeah. not to. You're yeah, going to have gonna you'll suck. have you'll have two versions. You'll have the uh, not penis and then the bat bat wang. And, and it'll yeah, probably they have to go one or the other. They have to make a decision. It'll probably go like this. next year. They'll release Batman Damned. It's the censored version. Then you wait like one or two years, and they go. Now you're getting the uncensored version. And, and I hope the uncensored oh, version like, has that panel as the cover. <laughs> like, the panel is the cover of the uncensored version. I need to make it. I need to make it my phone wallpaper. The censored one is just a picture of Batmite next to his dong. It's just. I I would be good with that. <laughs> But uh, no, I wouldn't pay hundred bucks for it. But if you want CGC copies, uh, hit me up because Torpedo is going to get some CGC signed it's, copies. Yeah, soon. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're not doing a second printing. But if you want a first printing, what's a CGC copy of that running for Gabe right now? Um, I don't know about right now because there's not that many out. Some guy has a 10.0 on eBay for eight grand. <laughs> what? What? Yeah, I didn't even know the 10.0s were. Legit existing. Yeah, yeah we've had a few. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I just I've never seen one in person. Well, you still haven't. You're but right. It's on eBay. Unless you want to buy it. No, I'm not going to spend it. eight grand for that book. Yeah, but we're going to be getting a uh, uh, double signed and four times signed copies. So, man, y'all are going to be making bank, uh, dude. This guy, this guy, the signing yesterday. I guess he pre-ordered. This guy's crazy. He's a he's a big like speculator here in Vegas. Like all the shops know who he is. He's one of those guys that has like one name. Like he goes by one name, and that's all everybody knows him by. <laughs> um, his, his name is Panama. Like Panama. 
I Panama. think that country already has the rights to that name. Right. <laughs> well, he's from Panama, so I guess how people used to call him Panama in the service, and that just kind of stuck. But anyways, he had he had no joke. Twenty copies of each cover. Oh, of Batman. He was, Damned? Wait, yeah, what Batman Dam. He was getting. Man. He was sending in for us to get signed for him and graded and stuff like that. Oh, he was gonna get him signed. Damn, that dude's gonna walk around with some money. All right. Well, well we're we're going to uh, New York Comic Con. Uh, well, we're not going there like as a booth, but we're going there and getting um, meeting creators and getting stuff signed and stuff like that. So we're gonna come back with a bunch of signed. Are Batman you going? Dams. You're gonna go? To no, New- I'm not going. It's just it's just gonna be Zubair from Planet Awesome going for us. Zubair. I want to go. I wish we can go. Um, but. Jake, I I bought the Final Crisis Omnibus, and I think I can understand it. Maybe. Did you buy it? I haven't decided yet if I want it. I've been talked out of it. Uh, people have said that the Final Crisis Absolute is enough, that uh, you don't necessarily need all the tie-ins. And since it's so expensive, I was thinking that may be one I don't get. It's pretty expensive. The I don't know. I, 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 I like some of those tie-ins. Okay. And, I, and you know, I like the only thing I don't like about it is the stupid ten year anniversary name that they give it because I hate books that come like that. Oh, because eventually, you know, that's not going to be relevant <laughs> anymore when the twentieth anniversary comes out or the fifteenth anniversary. <laughs> so, uh, but I ended up getting it. Did you get? I know, Gabe, you got it, right? I have it. Yeah, I have it. Yeah, that was the famous uh, opening in the store. <laughs> Yeah, that, that that caused a kind of a little bit of a issue on the forum. That was kind of oh, funny. Smoke, that was great. That was uh, epic. That thread has over two hundred fucking comments on it now. Wow. Um, what are your thoughts on Superman Red Sun? I think we've all read that. I think it's one of the best Superman stories ever. I can say it's probably my favorite Mark Miller story because I'm not a Mark Miller fan at all. I like it a lot. I like Luis. It. What? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of Superman reading. Red Sun? What do I think about Superman Red Sun? Yeah. I think it's brilliant. Uh, up until... I didn't care for the last few panels. I thought it was cool, but it didn't need it. Um, but I think it's fantastic. I, I love the concept of Superman being born in Soviet Russia and how it really still doesn't totally affect who he is and his ideals and uh, Soviet Batman is pretty badass. I'm not gonna lie. Um, it's it's Mark Millar at a point where he was pretty much firing on all cylinders. Was this pre Civil War or post Civil? Oh, yeah. yeah, this is all pre Civil War, pre Ultimate. This was this was him firing on all cylinders. He was just coming into the industry and he was just blowing up. And this was one of those books where you read it and you thought, "Wow, this is." fucking awesome and it's a really cool concept and it's really interesting and the art is great who was it that did the art on it i forgot johnson johnson yeah yeah it's, did the covers for really bullets yeah it's really really good i i definitely recommend it if you're looking for like a one-off superman story you don't need to know anything background wise on the character other than he lands in soviet russia instead of the united states which i think is a really cool concept it is. It's a. It's a really good hook. Mark it's Miller's only like what, four issues, like four like prestige style issues. It's not that yeah. long of a story. Yeah, it's not that long of a story. Mark Millar is good at that, though. He's good at uh, at giving you really great hooks and really uh, great stories. His Jupiter's Legacy stuff is probably some of the best superhero comics that are being published right now. It's phenomenal. Really? Yeah. I I like love it. The Jupiter I'm stuff is. So we don't have a deluxe edition of those with a. Uh, Wait, Frank Wiley did the first ones, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah he did. And it, it, I don't have those collected somewhere. The first one is fantastic. The first few volumes, and there's there's a bit that just left my jaw on the floor. And if you've read it, you know the whole thing with aneurysm. I was like, oh my god, when you turn the page, it's just oh. I haven't read much Mark Miller stuff after like, guy like Kick Ass Two, like the Miller World stuff. I haven't gone into. I haven't read Huck. I haven't read like Jupiter's Ascending um, or any of Red stuff. Reborn. I didn't really care for that, but I, I love read Red Reborn. Reborn. No, I think the last thing I read of his that he did kind of on his own was Superior. Is that what that was called? Yeah, the Superman. It was kind of like a like a Shazam kind of like a different kind of take on Shazam. Yeah, the uh, but the Jupiter stuff is must buy. 
It's great. Uh, yeah, you would especially it. like yeah. it. Again. I think you would really enjoy the Jupiter stuff. It's been collected just in trade paperbacks, right? Or do you yeah. know? Yeah. yeah it's, been, no okay. hard covers. it's been collected in trades, no hardcovers. And uh, there's like a preview series, which I think the preview, not, not the preview, the um, – yeah, I'm – all over the place today. Um, there's Jupiter's Legacy. There's Jupiter Circle. That's it. Jupiter Circle takes place before Jupiter's Legacy, which leads into that. And Jupiter's Legacy spans across different timelines. It's so good. It's really good stuff. I can't wait to see. I think it's getting a Netflix special, if what? I'm not mistaken. Oh, really? Wow. I think Millar's got like a Netflix deal with a lot of his stuff. So yeah. I'm not really about that. They got hard up for. It's, it was like a nine-figure deal. Yeah, and he, he's cashing in on all his properties. Wow. <laughs> a lot. It's a lot of money, Jess. <laughs> yeah. I remember, Mark Miller? Right, for Miller World. Yeah, it's like $300 million he got out of that deal or something yeah. crazy. Uh, like that. Yeah, it's something guy. crazy. He's not that good of a writer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, no, it, it, they, they bought the rights to make movies out of all of his, like, his, uh, his his creations. So I, still, do they want. I still remember the ad of uh, Nemesis was like, "What if Batman? What, what if Batman was a cunt?" And I'm like, "Batman is a cunt." Nemesis. We already got the answer. That stuff was terrible. Yes, Nemesis was not good. No, it was and it was uh, Steve McNiven, right? So it was a team that did a uh, Civil, Civil War. War. Yeah. yeah, Logan and a team that did Omega Logan. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just happy we're finally getting more Umbrella Academy this Wednesday. Woo! -hoo. The comic comes out. Back out this Wednesday. The next uh, the next series oh, of Dream Academy. Gosh, comes. That's, gonna be a, that's a live action show somewhere, right? Netflix uh, yeah. next year. Next year, okay. So, so we get that. We get uh, Rick Remender's um, Deadly Class too. Mm. That's a I think that's AMC if I'm not mistaken. Go to Amazon. No, Deadly Class is sci-fi. <laughs> <laughs> We're all over the place. Yeah. This is where you get your news on Sunday. Yeah, <laughs> from a hungover Louise. It's, it's on the UPN network. <laughs> UPN. <laughs> uh, Deadly class. I'm pretty sure sci-fi. There's a trailer out already, and it looks Deadly class. Yeah, yeah badass. What's up, Kenny? Kenny's in the chat. Um, let's see. Omni Bros. The movie on Netflix. Danny DeVito is just bro. <laughs> Wow. Danny DeVito, I'm way taller than Danny DeVito. <laughs> and slimmer. I, you're getting put in timeout for What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Vin plays you. Gabe. Oh, what is the best series to read X23? Her solo series or Chris Yo's X Force? Um, I would start with Chris Yo's X Force first. Yeah. I get you the well, idea of the character. Series is what leads to what. And she got she was put on Uncanny X Men, and then she was put on New X Men, and then she was put on X Force. But that all new Wolverine series is top notch. I yeah. love all new Wolverine. Like she, yeah, was, she didn't really get much love, or like she was kind of like like not much spotlighted until that X Force series, and well, then she kind of disappeared again until like the all new Wolverine. But she didn't start developing in, into her own character until I uh, what's his name took over the book. Uh, uh, the guy that rode. King? Is that his name? No, last name. The guy that wrote All New Wolverine. Oh, Tom Taylor? Tom Taylor, thank you. Because I think before that, like, she was very one-dimensional. She was a killing machine. And there's very little you can do with that because we already have Wolverine. It's just that she was female, and that's it. So I I think I didn't really fall in love with the character until All New Wolverine. Yeah, me too. Before that, it was just like, oh, this is really pretty art to look at. Oh, look at her killing all these people. I, I guess that was cool, but... <laughs> Uh, X Force is a, is an awesome book, though. No, I really like it, and I'm surprised we don't have an omnibus of those things yet. Favorite mm -hmm. Superboy, Connor Kent or John Kent? Oh, oh, what a tough choice, Connor. I gotta go with uh, who I go with. Yeah, I'm going with John. Fuck, dude, that's hard. Yeah, that's yeah. really difficult. God is great, though. Him. He's really yeah. cool. I think so. Yeah, it's me. I gotta put myself on a timer to make sure I didn't go over too much. Oh, okay. Uh, so when we take a couple more questions, then I gotta bounce. I got an eight and a half hour drive with me. Although I have been introducing myself as uh, Jess's ward uh, lately. <laughs> when <we're now. laughs> he's of course, Omar chooses Connor Kent with that Superboy shirt he's wearing. Ah, yeah, I didn't even notice. Of course, Connor. Yeah, Connor all the way. I love that guy. 
Dan Cohen, I mean, you won. Congratulations. So I need you to uh, say in the chat what email address I'm supposed to use. Um, am I using the one that you uh, sent in to Omnibros Live, or is there a different one you use for IST? So send me, maybe you already sent me the answer in uh, Gmail. Let me check. Yeah, da -ding. Is that him up there? No. Yeah, it is. Th Daniel Cohen, right? Yeah. It's the same one. Yeah, we got an answer, right? Well, IST card, but I mean, he won way down here, I think. Right, so click on that one up there. Well, I'm not going to tell you how to read email. You know how to do this. There's his email address. <laughs> okay. I'll just this assume is, that's what you want to send to Emily. Why can't you guys bundle over email? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll just use that one. We'll, Daniel, we'll just use that. Uh, wait, what's the number three there? He, it's it's a, a, he, he just sent the email. email. Let me double check. So yep, yep, same email. Email. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Same email. We got all it. Right. We'll, we'll take care of you. We're we'll all set, care. Daniel. Good job. Wow. Relax. Congratulations. Um, so there's a couple more questions. Um, I really want to get into X Men. Where should I start? That's a good one. I love. I love getting that question. I always say, New X Men. Giant size one. <laughs> a CGC copy that you crack open. <laughs> I wanted to get so lit last night. I took all of Jess's CGC copies with a hammer and chisel and just started <laughs> fucking opening them up to read them when he wakes up. Oh, he morning. started messing with me big time on the, this one, Gabe. Oh, really? Oh, I got this one that uh, was a 9.0, and it had a couple of stress marks on the spine, and, and he started messing with me like, Oh gee, I don't know. Is this really a 9.0 or not? Look at the <laughs> spine, and and uh, I'm like, oh, I don't know. Let me compare it to another 9.0. Gee, it doesn't look like a 9.0. And then he goes, are these things ever counterfeited in China? Are you sure you got the real thing from eBay? I'm like, what the? I better contact somebody at CGC. And I wasn't even. I was. He was drunk. I was sober. I had a cup of coffee. He was totally messing with me. I'm like, wait, what? He was having a panic attack. I was. I was like, I just spent real money on this book. <laughs> did you uh, Did you get anything at the show, Jess? I know you hit me up about that. that I did get that one book that I talked to you about. You did? I did get that book, yeah. For the price we were talking about? For the price we talked about, yeah. Okay, excellent. Goodbye, man. Goodbye. Okay, yeah, I felt like I should run it by you first. Comic Advisor 2.0. I am Comic Advisor 3.0 because I question everything that he gets. That's right. I was worried he was going to start pawing through the box of CGCs <laughs> that I haven't put in my safe deposit box yet and pulling them out. Oh, I think he got ripped off here too. <laughs> Freaking guy. Uh, but to answer your question, there is an epic release. It's called X-Men Second Genesis. I think that's a really good starting on point. Jess likes the new X-Men run. That's available in Omnibus and Traver format. Where would you guys start? Tell somebody to start reading X Men, Louise, Gabe. Try of Gambit. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> boot him off the show. Oh, now I can boot you off the show. Yeah, you're right here. You can do it. What about you, Louise? Where would you start? Uh, Uncanny X Force. Okay, all over the place. Well, there you go. There are four choices. So don't forget to tell us how much Trial of Gambit suck balls when you read it. <laughs> <laughs> is that second genesis is that the jim lee like run or no second genesis is the chris claremont and uh dave cockrum giant size one. Oh, okay okay it's silver ag but it, i think it's good just grab the epic collections man like basically like a lot of the x-men epic collections you can kind of just jump in and enjoy and if you God Which Loves Man Kills is my favorite X-Men story. I love Executioner it. Executioner Song is a good one, too, I think. And yeah. if you're reading the X-Men and you have no clue what, what's going on, congratulations, you're reading the X-Men. <laughs> <laughs> I think, well, I think Alex B., that's, that's what I recommend to people that want to get into comics, too, because I think it shows you how wonderful the X-Men can be and what they're all about. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of dialogue you have to read. Yeah, but it's so damn good, though. Yeah, Thomas Judge, I do love Joe Medora's art in the Trial of Gambit, but yes. it's not a pass for that shitty storyline. I'm gonna be really happy pretty soon with the signing we might have down at the at the store next year. Uh, oh, it might be Joe Mad. It might be Joe Mad. Ooh, wow, that's awesome, man. 
I'll send you a bunch of books to get signed. Great. I would love to get him on the show, especially his involvement in the video game side of things too. Yeah, dude, I, should, I, I would totally get him up. Uh, Leighton Watson, the uh, Jimmy Palmiani, Amanda Connor, Harley Quinn run is the one that made me fall in love with her and made me such a Harley Quinn fan. I am a huge Harley Quinn fan. I'm a huge fan of that run. So I would say absolute two thumbs up on starting off your Harley Quinn reading with uh, the Jimmy Palmiotti, Amanda Connor stuff. It's excellent. I is, loved it. Is that the stuff that's been collected in omnibus format? Right. The okay. second omnibus is coming out this week, I think. Okay. First or even the Carl week. Kessel stuff, since he might be on the show. Right. And it's funny. I said, when is this second, when is the sequel to this book coming out? Because it ends on a cliffhanger. And he was like, I don't know. I don't know when it's coming out. They don't tell me anything. Yeah. So we told him that it's been solicited. <laughs> and he's like, oh, good. Oh, well, that's good. Because this ends after like eight issues in a cliffhanger. And then Mark Wade, I said, hey, uh, so when's Irredeemable getting reprinted? And he goes, I have no idea. It's whenever I, I get a box of books shipped to my door is when I find out. And I'm like, oh, maybe I should talk to somebody at Boom Studios. And he's like, yeah, they would know better than I would. That's so sad. <laughs> Damn, Only Pool has um, this copy of Dark Siders for PS3 signed by Joe Mad. That's awesome. That's cool. I love hey, that. Game. Uh, Harley Quinn 2 Two comes out November, November 24th. Oh, the Omnibus? The, the, uh, the Carl Kessel stuff, yeah. Oh, the Carl Kessel book. Okay, good. We told him it was solicited. Um, have you guys, Have you? I know Gabe and I read it, but have you two read the Heroes in Crisis book? Uh-uh. I know who dies of Gabe spoiler for me. I asked. Oh, no spoiler for me. Oh, you didn't know that Wonder Woman got killed? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Wonder <laughs> Woman. <laughs> They're gonna kill the one character that actually produces a good movie. <laughs> um I, was, it, it, I, I honestly it reminded me of like really not that well nineties gimmicky comic books. Like a lot of those uh extreme studio comics where they start killing characters off for no reason. But oh, I know yeah, I mean no. It, it's uh, to me. It's you know. I'm sure the payoff will be later on, halfway through the series. I'm sure it will get better. But I was just like, "What? This is the yeah. same guy that wrote the Vision." <laughs> all, all the deaths are like off panel too. Well, yeah. So you know, I mean, you know, there's you get Booster Gold involved. Everything is going to be time displaced. You you know what to expect from the story. I'm not going to spoil anything, but you kind of get to know. Oh, okay. Well, that's how they can fix things or whatever. But I, I guess we'll see. Um. So, uh, one more question. One more question. Okay. You're the one. You're the one on the schedule. Yeah. yeah. I gotta make sure I'm home to put my girls to sleep. That's all they want. So. So I, I found them some Pokemon stuffed animals too. Oh, that's awesome. That's you always look for Pokemon stuff for your kids. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that. I'm big, big, big guy that like because when I'm gone, I like to get them stuff. I do want to get a Dark Siders, uh, not Dark Siders, but Battle Chasers. I want to buy a physical copy of Battle Chasers for the Switch. Yeah. So is that a thing? Is, is that already, a thing? Yeah. Have they done a physical copy of uh, Battle Chasers? Yeah, it's out. I've seen it out. Oh, okay. in store. I have a digital copy of it, but I like to have a physical one just because it's physical. Jess, uh, Omnipool is reminding you that Harley Quinn Omnibus Volume 2 has a Harley's Little Black Book. He knows. I know. I'm sad about that. But ha the, it start, Harley's Little Black Book starts out well enough, but then about halfway through, it really starts to spiral down. And then the Lobo book, the Lobo uh, comic is just god-awful. You don't like Lobo, or you just don't like his comics? I didn't like... I like Lobo fine. I like Harley fine. I didn't like how either character was written in Little Black Book. Oh, and I told you that as soon as he retracted his message. So maybe he, 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 he didn't want to tell you that. My bad, Omni Pool. <laughs> <laughs> he and I have discussed it on the show before, though. It's not a big Jesus. Deal. We got sixty people watching. This is almost like a Monday show. <laughs> yeah. What? That's awesome. Sorry to the people that missed out on winning the gift card, though. Yeah. Wonder hey, how uh, how are gonna drop by half. Yeah, if you don't want to miss out, make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell to get notified when our show starts. Sunday works a lot better for a lot of people. Apparently, I think you're right. Too. All you yeah. fucking heathens not going to church. This is their church. Now pass out the collection plate. <laughs> super <laughs> yeah, super chat that collection plate around. <laughs> do it. There it is. John <laughs> tweeted my tweet that we need a nice trade paperback collection of 
or omnibus of his. Yes, we fucking. Yeah, that'd be great. Of his. Green no, they have the that and uh, that, uh, Kyle. Uh, the Kevin Smith one. But then, like, we need the Winnick and then, like, the Brian Metzer stuff. Oh, that's a really nice comment from Jazz Cabbage. Jazz Cabbage. Thank like you. That name. That's nice. This is the best comic book podcast. Awesome, man. Thank you. You damn skippy. Or person. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know their gender. Sorry, not to assume. You're always assuming everyone's a dude. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, sure. Our statistics are literally like 98% men, anyways. There's a couple of women that watch us. Boy, there was a lot of women at the show. Fuck yeah. Yeah, apparently there was some half naked ones that you were oogling over. Just yes, like I'm not into anime or this manga bullshit, but these women are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> then I saw then I saw this one character on Friday all dressed up. I'm like, look, Omar, there's some thing out of a manga or something. Oh, He's, and I was like, I had to introduce him to the world of furry. He said, Jess, that's a furry. furry and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, I'm going to show you a documentary on furries. <laughs> There's also the My Little Ponies, the Cloppers. Cloppers. What the hell is that? Uh, we probably can't get into it here. Probably the same thing with furries, but with My Little Pony characters. Yeah. Yeah. Man, some of those furries are pretty hot looking, though, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Google Cloppers, kids. <laughs> <laughs> You can find it on pinisland.com. What is that? Look it is up. that something else I don't know about? <laughs> it's, it's a place to get really nice pins, and then you can look up other information. Oh, so like pinterest. Pin Island. I'm afraid to go there. Yeah, because it's really penis land. <laughs> <laughs> Pen Island. <laughs> Jess's laugh is so contagious. Penis land. Yeah, I get it. I know it's funny. <laughs> it's like you throw the word penis out there. You just can't stop laughing. I know. I can't stop laughing. <laughs> funny word. He's so giddy. <laughs> Oh my god, he's like a little child. I just found out the word. <laughs> <laughs> that can't be a real laugh, Shirley. No, it is. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. I'm um, dropping tears. That shit. <laughs> so, before we go, don't forget that today, if you're in one of those states, that their uh, tax collection is going to start hitting us tomorrow at InStock Trade. So, today, we have a take list advantage of, of that extra 3% off. We have a list of those. Uh, I know Kentucky's on there, so that's where I'm. Not in Nevada, Nevada, so so you guys are fine. Jess is fine in Virginia, but I think Baltimore or Maryland and uh, Virginia got hit. Or West Virginia. West got Virginia, hit. yeah, yeah. Florida has always been paying. Well, I hit West, it hit West Virginia all you want. All those two plus bastards. Well, honestly, I mean, <laughs> it's just it's you know it's bound to happen anyway. Everybody will eventually get this. It just sucks that we get it now. So. Yeah. And that's in stocktrades.com where you can get your collected editions up to 50% off. Loyalty discounts add 2% to that. Sometimes they have sales that will add 3% to that. Every quarter, there's an Omnibros live discount code. Fabulous packaging, fabulous service, and over $50 in orders gets you free shipping in the United States. That's in stocktrades.com. Packing so nice, you can use it twice. Yeah, yeah, somebody came up with that. Give that guy credit. What was his name? I got to look it up now. God bless. What was the? Somebody came up with that in one of our. Um, and say it again. Uh, packing so nice, you can use it twice. Oh, yeah. Packing so nice, you can use it twice. By, like the, way, recycling. by the way, Gabe, did you get in trouble for that omnibus? Like that other <laughs> Did I get in trouble for the omnibus? The uh, dark, not the dark, the one that you trolled that guy on. Well, what you mean? Like, did 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 John get mad at me that I posted it on the web on the <laughs> website? Yeah. No, no. That was so dumb, dude. Because like, I, I was gonna tell the guy because the guy's mad because I took a picture of it in the store and posted it on on our the Facebook group saying, "Hey, you can pick it up at IST for for cheap." He said, "How are you gonna take a picture of it in a store and tell somebody to buy it on a different mm -hmm. website?" Well, one, how are you? How would you buy it from nope. Torpedo? These answers to the questions. Unless you walk into the store physically and buy it, we don't have an online store to buy omnibuses and stuff like that. So I'm not taking away anything from anywhere. Yeah, really. And at the same time, there's many, many times I go on the board 
and I end up selling stuff through Torpedo. You know, like, did you guys see that the uh, uh, that Omar's favorite X Men omnibus is blown up in price on eBay right now? Which one? Which one? Uh, Onslaught. Oh, because yeah, that was part. Why? Of, uh, it's out of print. Oh, Onslaught's out of print now. Yeah, that's part of the one on the list that Jess or Gabe looked at. Yeah, but now, now all of a sudden it just got it's just been hitting prices. It's hitting because like, it's been out of print for over two months, so now yeah. the prices are going to start increasing, and that mm. thing ain't going to get reprinted for a while, if at all. I have a couple. Of average, I store. will take a look at your. Um, I'm an admin in the group, so I'll take a look at your name and see what I can do for you. Mm. Uh, Jazz Cabbage. I would like it if you would change your name to Jazz Cabbage for Facebook. I like that, but I'll look for you. Just to join the group. Or just cabbage. His name. Just cabbage. That's oh, wait. I was figuring out who that guy was. Oh, my, or Louis just distracted me. What's that now? I was supposed to look up the guy's name that came up with that 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 saying. Yeah, just give him credit and then we can Ryan, but wrap it up. There's like a million emails now in the omnibus thing. Was it an email? I thought it was a message on one of the – it was a comment. Let me look in the chat. That's why I posted in the chat, right? I appreciate that, but my family probably wouldn't like that. <laughs> Do we cabbage change your name? <laughs> uh, so yeah, man, this has been a fun stay. Uh, it was it, it was a pleasure to meet you, man. It's Seriously. been great meeting you and great having you. It was a uh, empty your pockets before uh, we, you go out. It's not my pockets. You got to <laughs> worry about. I want to see your luggage. We have sneakier ways to get omnis out of people's uh, houses. Mm. Uh. You got it? Yeah, it's uh, Doug Roberts. Doug Roberts. Thank you, Doug Roberts. That was a good idea. We really like it. Packing so nice, you can use it twice. Thank you, Doug. And I don't know how many of us. I'm pretty sure everybody who's ever sold something has used, repurposed that packaging at one point. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Especially within the group. All right. Um, Jess, you want to sign us off, buddy? Sure. Uh, Gabe, where can they find you on the interwebs? Uh, you can find me on Instagram. Gabe Infinity Watch. Uh, I'm in the Omnibus Collectors uh, Facebook group as well. I, I can kind of see regular posts now on my phone. Um, and our next signing at Torpedo Comics is October 20th, and it's Greg Capullo. Mm, nice. How about and you? in November, oh. November is the big one where Jess is going to be there. Yes, I've already got my tickets and I booked my reservations at a hotel, so I'm good to go. Where are you staying? Uh, I'm not going to tell the whole world where I'm staying. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you. I will. <laughs> then they'll send me 90 Domino's pizzas to my room. That's not a bad thing. Not bad thing. Or what do you care? You can go around feed the homeless. <laughs> You're so Don't do that. <laughs> we'll, we'll, bring them to, we'll, we'll bring those 90 pizzas to the signing and we'll be like the greatest people ever. <laughs> <laughs> Luis, where can they find you at Comics Guide 101? Well, you can find me at Comics Guide 101 on Facebook, Twitter, and the YouTube channel. And Omar, where can they find you? Uh, man, I can't believe I'm doing this. Look at this. I really <laughs> want to cut a mouth out here to take my. I mouth. bet you do. Yeah, I'm surprised <laughs> it doesn't already have one. Uh, you can find me on my channel, Near Mint Condition. Uh, with me and my other group of friends. Are you on this Tuesday or next Tuesday? Uh, next Tuesday is Old Reader, New Readers, where we're doing uh, Lock and Key. You could join us. Oh, I'd love to read reread that yeah, and join you. It, man. Next Tuesday. I love Lock and Key. And uh, I think I'll hey, do buddy. What's uh, up? Probably. You this see, look. So, hey. Well, for watching. You say hi? Andy, hey, say hi. Somebody there that wants to say goodbye. Say so, hi. Hey, guys. I got my boys here, and now they decided to kind of join in. Whoa. Oh, they hit you? Say hi. Say hi, Andy and Noah. Say hi. Say hi. <laughs> and you can find me, Omnidog, on Omnidog's Fault. And you can find Babe, get Babe the Gabe babysitting today. And I think that about wraps it up. Peace and love, peace and love. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And congratulations to Daniel Cohen for winning the IST gift certificate. Thanks, Omar, for visiting. This has been great. No, thank you, sir, for having That's, me. I know. You're welcome. Peace and love.